Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So uh, I'm sorry we're getting started a little bit late today. Uh, I hope you guys are still awake, inshallah, those of you that are in different parts of the world. Um, inshallah ta'ala, we're now on day 22 of Ramadan and we're on just 22 as well of the Qur'an. And uh, I wanted to actually pick up from where I left off uh, yesterday when we were talking about just 21 because we didn't actually get a chance to get into Surah Al-Sajdah. Uh, Surah Al-Sajdah is actually part of just 21, but just to sort of give you what's, re what's required to understand of it, uh, when you're looking at the next juz as, as it relates to the next juz because there's quite a bit of overlap between Surah Al-Sajdah and Juz 22 even though it's at the end of uh, Juz 21. Uh, Surah Al-Sajdah begins with this concept of no doubt. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif la mim tanzeelu al-kitabi la rayba fihi min rabbil alameen. Very similar to the way that Surah Al-Baqarah uh, begins. That this is the book that has been revealed from the Lord of the worlds and, and in which there is no doubt whatsoever. They say that the Prophet ﷺ fabricated it. You should say, rather, it is the truth from your Lord, O Muhammad ﷺ, to warn a people to whom no warner has come before you, so perhaps, that, so perhaps they will be guided. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. And this is pretty much consistent through the different surahs that we're going to see within just 22. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the, uh, the authenticity of the book. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes into the, um, the role of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to call people towards Islam. Now, these next few surahs really focus on the role of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on anyone who wants to follow in the role of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So just keep that in mind. So when you're talking about Surah Al-Sajda, first you have this, uh, this this tone that's been set. And the idea here is that there is no doubt whatsoever in the message of the Prophet wasallam. There is no doubt for anyone uh, to, to, to cast on the integrity of the messenger or on the message itself. Realize that doubt is casted either on the message itself. So whenever people would attack the Prophet wasallam, they'd either attack the message itself or they would attack, um, they would attack the the Prophet ﷺ and they would try to attack his character. So there is no doubt in the message, and there is no doubt in the messenger. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions to us in Surah Al Sajda the way that a group of people, the way that the believers respond to this message, in which there is no doubt. Allah Subhanahu wa says, "Inna ma yu'minu bi ayatina ladina ida dukiru biha kharu sujadan." So the ayah of sajda, the ayah of prostration actually in Surah Al-Sajda is that those, only those believe in our ayat and our verses and evidences who when they are reminded of them, they fall down in sajda and they glorify the praises of their Lord and they are not arrogant or boastful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, anil It's the last 10 nights of Ramadan, so this is actually a very crucial point. They arise from their beds, they forsake their beds, um, you know, fighting with their sides as they as they forsake their beds at night. Um, they call upon their Lord in fear and in hope. And from what we have provided to them, they spend. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and so in verse 17, no person knows what is kept hidden from them uh, of joy as a reward for that which they used to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the believers and how they have no doubt in the message of the Prophet sallallahu and in the character of the Prophet sallallahu and in the reward that's been promised by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they are up all night. They are seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. They're seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward. They're constantly calling upon him in fear and in hope because they have no doubt whatsoever in the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now interestingly enough, Surah Al-Sajda ends with وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ فَلَا تَكُنْ فِي مِرْيَةٍ مِنْ لِقَائِهِ وَجَعَلْنَاهُ هُدًا لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, and certainly we gave Musa Alayhi Salam 
uh, the scripture as well. So before you, Musa alayhi salam was given the scripture. So do not be in doubt. Now what that means is, um, just like Musa alayhi salam was given the book and Musa alayhi salam was doubted and Musa alayhi salam was called names and he was called the fabricator and so on and so forth, you too, Ya Rasulullah, will also be called that way. So you should not be in doubt of your own message of, of the role that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you or the prospects of this message. And those that are following the Prophet Sallallahu or those that are hearing the message of the Prophet Sallallahu should have no doubt whatsoever in his integrity and his authenticity and the authenticity of his message and the fact that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will, will, will allow him to prosper as he did Musa Alayhi Salam, the Prophet Musa Alayhi Salam uh, with his uh, scripture. The ulama differed about فَلَا تَكُنْ فِي مِرْيَةٍ مِنْ نِقَائِ Do not be in doubt over your meeting with him. Um, <clears throat> some of the scholars said, "Do not." It's 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 th that the muhatab, the one who's being spoken to, is not. It, it's the prophet sallallahu So either it's the prophet sallallahu or it's the believers. If it's the prophet sallallahu do not be in doubt concerning your meeting with him. Is the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa taala or the meeting with Musa alayhi salam that would take place in al Isra wal Mi'raj, because this is a Mecca surah that precedes uh, al Isra wal Mi'raj. So do not be in doubt, uh, O Muhammad Sallallahu about your meeting with Allah and you will meet Musa Alayhi Salaam as well. And at the same time, you will find that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has crafted for you a path of glory after hardship as he did Musa Alayhi Salaam and for the believers as well. Of course, if we are the Mukhatab here, if we're being spoken to, do not be in doubt over our, over, over our meeting with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, over what Allah Subhanahu over what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is calling us to which is belief in Allah and belief um, in the last day. But the point is, is that it ends off with Musa alayhi salam was doubted as well, right? The, the message here is that Moses was doubted as well. The end of Surah Al-Ahzab, which is the next surah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la takunu ka ladhina adha Musa. O you who believe, do not be like those who harm Musa alayhi salam. <clears throat> so there's a connection between a sajda, the end of a sajda, and the end of Surah Al-Ahzab. So if we move on to Surah Al-Ahzab, which is the next surah, um, Al-Ahzab obviously referred to the, 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 the confederates that, that surrounded Medina to massacre the Prophet Sallallahu and the believers. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala gave them victory, uh, gave the believers victory over all of these uh, troops and all of these confederates that came from various tribes to plot against the Prophet Sallallahu Now Surah Al-Ahzab um, is interesting because these surahs are Mecca surahs. This bunch of surahs that we're talking about now, they're Mecca surahs. They were revealed in Mecca. Surah Al-Ahzab, the first half of it is Madani. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a Medina surah. The first half of it is a Madani surah. Okay? So the first half is revealed in Medina. The second half, according to most of the scholars, is also Meccan. So the first half of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha nabiyu, ittaqi laha, wa la tuta'i al-kafirina wal munafiqina, inna allaha kana aliman hakima, wa attabi' ma uhiya ilayka min rabbik, inna allah, min rabbika, inna allaha kana bima ta'maluna khabira. So, O oh Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh Messenger of Allah, keep your duty to Allah and do not obey the disbelievers and the hypocrites. Meaning, don't follow the, the disbelievers or the hypocrites. Verily, Allah is ever knowing and all wise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and follow that which is revealed to you from your Lord. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever with what you do acquainted. And rely upon Allah, and sufficient is Allah as a disposer of your affairs. So the first few verses of Surah Al Ahzab are a message to the Prophet Sallallahu to just focus on the message that's been given to you. Do not pay attention to the doubters and to the haters and to those that will uh, question you and, and cause you harm and so on and so forth. Just do your part. Um, <clears throat> the thing that we realize about the first section of Surah Al-Ahzab is that it's really talking about the way that the Prophet ﷺ is to be dealt with and his family is to be dealt with in the, Mad in, in the Madani context. Once, they, once the Prophet ﷺ is the authority, he is the head of state in Medina, and there are certain rules that are being revealed in Surah Al-Ahzab. Amongst these rules, the rules of hijab, uh, the rules of modesty. Amongst these rules, how to address the wives of the Prophet wasallam. So the right of the Prophet upon you, as well as the right of the wives of the Prophet wasallam, uh, 
um, upon you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 6, And Nabi Aula bin Mu'minina min anfusihim wa azwajuhu ummahatuhum that the Prophet وسلم, is closer to the believers than their own selves, and his wives are their mothers. So his wives are our mothers in two ways. In the spiritual sense, obviously, they are our mothers. And in the technical sense, um, you know, what that in regards to marriage, in regards to mahram, uh, mahram status, which means that um, though they're not like our mothers in, in the way that all of our in the way that our mothers are, meaning they they still have to observe hijab from the believers, and in fact, there's an added uh, layer of hijab, an added layer of modesty that's required for the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But they cannot be married after the Prophet sallallahu So both in the spiritual sense, they are our mothers, and in the technical sense, there are mothers in the in the in, in the way that we cannot that, that no one was allowed to marry the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after he passed uh, away alayhi salatu wasallam. So Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions the way that the believers were tested, but Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions again some of the rules. Uh, of of the believing women as well, in the way that they speak, that the, you know, in the way that they carry themselves, in the way that the men carry themselves um, with the women, some of the administrative issues um, in Medina. Now that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is actually in charge, and Subhanallah, in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa taala just constantly clarifies the role of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So in verse twenty one, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa you have a good example to follow. If you hope for your meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last day, and if you remember Allah much. In Surah Al-Sajda, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't be in doubt of the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Ahzab here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if you, if you have hopes for that meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you hope to be amongst those that are favored and are rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that meeting, then the example to follow is the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the goodness of the example um, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you'll find throughout the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning uh, basically all of the rights of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon us. So for example, the command of salawat, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. That verily Allah and His angels, they send their, their prayers upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O oh, you who believe, send your peace and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So even Allah and His angels uh, send salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So who are you to not send salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So the Prophet sallallahu role as the greatest example is clarified. The Prophet ﷺ being most deserving of having salawat lavished upon him, prayers and peace and blessings lavished upon him, is, is clarified. The command of the Prophet ﷺ, مَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ That it is not befitting for a believing man or a believing woman if Allah and the Messenger ﷺ have judged in a matter that they should have their say in something. Meaning what? The command to obey the Prophet ﷺ is also here. So the command of salawat, the command to follow his example, the command to obey him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies his position with the believers that he's closer to you than your own selves. However, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ He's not your father, but instead he is the messenger of Allah that's been sent to you and the seal of the Prophet's um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that you should turn your attention to obeying Allah the way the Prophet وسلم, obeyed Allah, to loving Allah the way that the Prophet وسلم, loved Allah. So trying to strive to be like the Prophet وسلم. You need to move beyond an emotional attachment with the Prophet وسلم, and actually follow the Prophet, وسلم, follow his commands, follow his examples. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha nabi, inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. O Prophet of Allah, indeed we have sent you as a witness upon the people, as one who bears glad tidings, and as one who carries the warning. And you are a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you are an illuminating lamp. You are an illuminating lamp. 
وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِأَنَّ لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَضْلًا كَبِيرًا And give glad tidings to the believers that they have a great bounty waiting for them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تُطَعِ الْكَافِرِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ وَدَعْ أَذَاهُمْ And do not pay attention to the insults and the abuses of the disbelievers and the hypocrites and ignore them. وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ And put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient as a disposer of one's affairs. Now, this ayah is revealed particularly in regards to those who are mocking the marriage of the Prophet ﷺ uh, to Zainab um, And it's really interesting here because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by necessity, if you are one who mocks the Prophet ﷺ, then <clears throat> you are a hypocrite. Only a hypocrite or a disbeliever would mock the Messenger ﷺ. Not only that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet ﷺ to respond to those abuses with grace. Not to pay attention to them, not to pay attention to the insults, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see you through those things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you victory over your opponents, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will purify you from all of the slander and all of the, 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 um, the taunting that's coming your way. If you focus too much on, you know, on, on, on putting out the darkness, or if you focus too much on the darkness, then you're not going to be able to light up the room. So subhanAllah, you are Siraj and Munira. You are an illuminating lamp. You by, by your nature, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you light the candle. You know, they say don't complain about the darkness, but light the can but, but light the match or, or light the candle. I forget which one it is. But the point is is that you are the light. So don't focus too much on the darkness. Focus on being that light. Da'adahum, ignore their insults, ignore their taunts, ignore their slander. Tawakkal ala Allah. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's how the Prophet ﷺ should respond to harm. And then subhanAllah, the end of the surah is, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la takunu kalladheena adha Musa fabarra'ahu Allahu mimma qalu wa kana inda Allahi wajiha. O you who believe, don't be like those who harmed Musa a.s. who caused harm to Musa a.s. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala barra'ahu Allahu mimma qalu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified him from the things that were being said about him. Just like he would purify the Prophet Sallallahu uh, from the things uh, that, that, that were being said about him. So vindication came to Musa Isa, and it would come to the Prophet Sallallahu and to the believers. So don't be amongst those people that would cause that harm to the Prophet Sallallahu and cause that harm to Musa salam, and so on and so forth. So Surah Al-Ahzab really talks about the role of the Prophet Sallallahu with the believers. Um, you know, in every way whatsoever, uh, and, and, you know, both at an administrative level, at an emotional level, from a mahram perspective, from a, uh, from a marriage perspective, from, uh, from the perspective of following him, from the perspective of uh, yielding to his judgment in our affairs, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of these things, the rights of the Prophet sallallahu upon us are clarified um, within, uh, within this surah. So the next, uh, the, the way that, that, that Surah Al-Ahzab ends, if you pay attention as well, um, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ آذَى مُوسَى فَبَرَّأَهُ اللَّهُ مِمَّا قَالُوا وَكَانَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَجِيهًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا O you who believe, fear Allah, be mindful of Allah, and speak words of truth, speak, the right, speak with, with righteousness, and seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, you know, in this, in this same context of being conscious of him, This is really a, a beautiful transition because it will go into the next surah as well. Allah mentioned to us the responsibility of the Prophet sallallahu and the responsibility that we have to the Prophet sallallahu but then Allah mentions our responsibility now. That Allah has given us, entrusted us with the amana, with the trust of the, heaven, uh, of, of the earth and with the heavens, the earth and the mountains. Basically what that means is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us in a position now where we have our own responsibility. We have our own obligation to that which is around us. And we, you know, that, that we have to be very careful not to be wrongdoers in regards to our own amana. So that... The role of the Prophet ﷺ, the amana of the Prophet ﷺ was to deliver the message to all of us. The amana of each and every single one of us is that we are caretakers 
in our own capacity. Okay, it's been presented to us. And by that, Allah would punish the, the, the rejectors and the hypocrites and so on and so forth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept the repentance of the believing men and the believing women. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever forgiving and ever merciful. So the transition is from the role of the Prophet sallallahu to the role that each and every single one of us um, have with the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us. Now subhanAllah, the next surah, which is surah Saba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how different people deal with that responsibility and with the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them. So particularly, Allah gives us three examples. The example of David, Dawood alayhi salam, the example of Sulaiman alayhi salam, and the example of Saba, the example of Sheba. Uh, and, and so you have an example of two who received responsibility from Allah and they honored that responsibility. They received a trust from Allah and they honored that trust. Uh, they received many blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they, they were grateful for that, those blessings. They were not ungrateful. And so they fulfilled the responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to them. Then you have the third one, which is Saba, which is the opposite. Right, blessings were were lavished upon them, and they did not do with those blessings what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commanded them to do. So in verse ten of of, of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Walaqad atayna Dawood minna fadla," that we have given to Dawood alayhi salam grace from us. So we said, "Ya Jibalu," we said to the mountains, "Awwibi ma'ahu wa tayra wa alanna lahu alhadid." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we said to the mount we said to the mountains, glorify Allah alongside him. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we we have been given the responsibility as man collectively, as human being, as human beings, for the mountains and the earth and so on and so forth. So Allah commanded the, the mountains to glorify alongside Dawood alayhi salam, tayr and, and the birds around him as well. And we made the iron soft for him, alayhi salam. So Dawood alayhi salam was given all these types of, of, uh, of, of blessings so that he could make sabirat, uh, that he could make these, these full coats of mail and calculate precisely the links. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاعْمَلُوا uh, صَالِحَا And work all of you deeds of righteousness. إِنِّي بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Indeed, I am all seeing of that which you do. So basically Dawood Islam was given these great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then his son was even given more blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wali Sulaiman Ariha Ghuduha. so so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and to Sulaiman alayhi salam, we have subjected the uh, the wind. Um it's it's morning journey, Ghuduha, uh Shahrun, Warawahuha Shahr, that we have subjected to him the wind, its morning journey was that of a month, and its afternoon journey was that of a month. And we made flow for him a spring of, 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 of liquid copper. And amongst, basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes into the jinn who worked for Sulaiman alayhi salam, and all of the kingdom that was subjected to Sulaiman alayhi salam, يَعْمَلُونَ لَهُ مَا يَشَاءُ That they do for Sulaiman alayhi salam, whatever he wants to. مَا يَشَاءُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the different Blessings here. So you realize it's very specific with the blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Mahariba wa Tamafila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the chambers and the, and the statues and the bowls like, like reservoirs and the kettles. And we said to the family of Dawood alayhi salam, David and Solomon, I'malu ala Dawood a shukra wa, qa, uh, shukra wa qaleelu min ibadi al shakur. Work, O family of Dawood alayhi salam, uh, acts of gratitude. And very few of my servants are actually gratitude, are actually grateful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Work, O family of David, Dawood and Sulaiman, acts of gratitude. Show gratitude with what's been given to you. And Allah is telling us here that an element of gratitude exists. In, and in fact, the greatest element of gratitude is doing with the blessings of Allah what Allah wants you to do with them. That's the greatest element of, of gratitude. Not just saying Alhamdulillah or being grateful in the heart. But doing deeds of gratitude with the amount of the trust that Allah has given to you, with the blessings that He's given to you, work deeds of gratitude. وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِي الشكور, And so few of my servants are grateful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions to us 
that uh, that 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 لقد كان لسبع في مسكنهم آية that that there was a, a, that that indeed for Saba there was a sign in their dwelling place. They had their gardens, they had their provisions from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They had everything that was given to them as well, but because they did not do what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commanded them to do with those blessings, those blessings turned into punishment for them. So it, it gives us the audiences here. Here's the amana. Here's the trust that's been given by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu fulfilled his responsibility. Here is how people respond to the amana and respond to the blessings that have been given uh, to them by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So Surah Saba focuses on the way that you respond to the amana and the blessings that come from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then the next surah is Surah Fatir, okay, which is the originator, and it refers to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, of course, as the originator. And the, the, the tone continues here. مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ Whoever seeks honor, whoever seeks power, whoever seeks glory, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just gave us these examples of people that are seeking the dunya and people that are seeking the akhirah. Allah gave us the example of people that use the blessings of this world to seek something higher and those that to seek something lower. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fatir, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعِزَّةِ Whoever desires honor, power, glory. فَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا So to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs all honor and power and glory. Meaning the only way that you would be able to receive any of that glory is that you do the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, you know, wants you to do. إِلَيْهِ يَصْعَدُ الْكَرِيمُ الطَّيِّبُ To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala good words are raised وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ uh, and, and, and the righteous deeds, يَرْفَعُهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates those deeds as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you're seeking glory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're seeking honor, if you're seeking goodness, then know that goodness and honor and power and glory only come from putting your, your efforts towards pleasing uh, the one who is all deserving um, of glory and all deserving of honor. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, the, in verse 11, وَاللَّهُ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ تراب. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you from dirt, thumma min nutfa, and then from a drop of fluid, thumma ja'alakum azwaja, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you pairs and mates. وَمَا تَحْمِلُ مِنْ أُنثَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and no female conceives, nor does she give birth, إِلَّا بِعِلْمِهِ Except by the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يُعَمَّرُ مِنْ مُعَمِّرُ No one is given, no aged person is granted an extended Life, meaning no aged person has more years added to his lifespan or his lifespan um, lessened. Illa fi kitab, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already registered it. Inna dhalika ala Allah yaseer, and that is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not difficult for Allah to do. So Allah is in control of your age, Allah is in control of your, your, or the way that you came into being, and Allah is in control of the way that you would leave this world and the way that you would be raised once again on the day of judgment so you should seek that glory and that honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so verse 15 ya ayyuhan nasu antum al fuqara ila Allah wallahu huwal ghaniyul hamid o mankind it is you who stand in need of Allah but Allah is free of all need and worthy of all praise this is very powerful that Allah mentions this here because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give us this amana, did not give us the trust of, of, of the earth and the blessings that he's, been, that he's made available to us because he needs us to, to, to take care of these things or because he needs us to respond with obedience and so on and so forth. Antumul fuqara wa You are all in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu huwa al hamid. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of all wants and needs and worthy of all praise. In yasha yudhibikum wa yati bi khalqin jadeed. If he wills, he could destroy you and bring about an entirely new creation. وَمَا ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ بِعَزِيزِ And that is not difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah willed, he could do away with you all and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could bring about another creation that would do that which Allah has commanded them to do. SubhanAllah, Surah Yaseen, which is the last surah in this juz, Surah Yaseen talks about that changing talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing away with the people of Mecca, doing away with those that did not respond to their messengers 
and preserving uh, the reward of the messengers and preserving the position of the messengers. Ya Seen wal Quran al Hakim. By the Quran full of wisdom, in Nakala min al Mursaleen. You are from the messengers, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whether they doubt it or not, whether they call you a fabricator or not, whether they obey you or not, whether they insult you or they glorify you, you are from the messengers. Ala siratin mustaqim. And you are on the straight path. Tanzil al Aziz al Rahim. This is a revelation sent by the Almighty and the Most Merciful. Once again, what's already been uh, said in the previous surahs, in order that you may warn a people whose forefathers were not warned and so they are heedless. Indeed, the word of punishment has proved true against most of them. So they will not believe. So most of them are not going to respond to the amana, to the trust that's been given to them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment has been assured for them. Indeed, we have put shackles on their necks and they are to their chins. So they are with they are with heads kept aloft. They are forced up. And so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we have put before them a barrier. So in front of them a barrier, behind them a barrier. And we have covered them so that you cannot see them. So what is this referring to? The, uh, the lack of ability of the people of Mecca to harm the Prophet ﷺ and to harm the believers as they were leaving now to Medina. So the punishment will come to them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would protect his messenger sallallahu um, you know, and, and of course in the hijrah, the Prophet ﷺ would see them. And the Prophet ﷺ would, would, would throw dirt at, at, at their faces and say, Shahat al wujuh, these humiliated faces. They were unable to see the Prophet ﷺ or do any harm to the Prophet ﷺ, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed that barrier of protection for the Messenger ﷺ from all of these different directions. So, this is the elevation of the Prophet ﷺ in this world, that the Prophet ﷺ would not be harmed in this world, that he would be protected in this world. And that his message would 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 be supreme um, over those that wish to do him harm and over those that wish to stop him, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala then gives us the story of the messengers as they came to a town and they said to the people, "Id jaa al mursalun, id arsalna ilayhi muthnaini, fakadhabu huma faazzazna bitharifin, faqalu inna ilaykum mursalun." We sent them two messengers and they belied them both, so we reinforced those two messengers with a third. And they said, Verily, we have been sent to you as messengers. They said, You are only be- human beings just like us, and the Most Merciful has not revealed anything. You are only telling lies. So basically, the idea here that the Prophet was denied, Musa was, be- was denied. And they said that our Lord knows that we are messengers to you. The only responsibility we have is to deliver and convey the message plainly to you. Uh, and subhanAllah, this is, this is uh, interesting because the Prophet was told in Surah Al Ahzab, that you've been sent as a as a caller, you've been sent as a warner, you've been sent as one who gives glad tidings, but all you are to do is give the call and not pay attention to those that reject. You're doing your job. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here these messengers that also did their job. They also called upon the people. And when their people responded and they said, that if you don't stop, we're going to stone you in a painful Punishment is going to come to you from us. The messengers responded and said, Your evil omens be with you. Okay? In the kirtum, because you have been admonished, you have been reminded. But rather, you are a transgressing group of people. So the messengers did their job. They conveyed the message and they responded to the threats and they responded to the insults with grace. And the next Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us, وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ That a man came 
from the farthest part of the town, reminding the people, O oh people, obey the messengers. So this is the messenger of the messengers. He says, listen to the messengers. He's doing his job. He obeyed the messengers and he's telling them, listen to the messengers. They're, you know, they're calling you. They're not asking you for wages for themselves and they are rightly guided. And why should I not worship the one who originated me? What was the surah before? Fatir, the originator. So why should I not worship the one who created me in the first place? Who is the source of my origin? And to whom you will be returned? Why would you not worship the one who created you from dirt and who created you from nutfa and so on and so forth? So it connects to Surah Fatir as well as Surah Ahzab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, mentions to us, of course, that, um, that, that this man, as he called upon his people, as he, as he asked them to respond to the messengers, as he asked them to pay attention for no, no interest, no worldly interest, he was just fulfilling his amana. He was fulfilling his trust. What happened to him? They killed him. قِيلَ دِخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, enter into paradise. When he was killed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, enter into paradise. قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ He said, oh, I wish my people would know about the forgiveness that my Lord has shown to me and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made me from the honored ones. This shows you the heart of the da'i, the heart of the one who's calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> that even though his people killed him, he wanted good for them and he wished that they would know of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on and so forth. So these prophets and these messengers that are being mentioned to us, their role is being clarified. The followers of the messengers, their role is being clarified. How to do da'wah is being clarified. How to respond when your da'wah is not accepted, whether you're a messenger or a messenger of the messenger is being clarified. And Allah's protection in this world, the barrier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between you and your enemies. So the protection in this world is clarified and your entrance into Jannah is assured if you do your role and that is clarified. Okay, so if you do your job, you would be told to enter into paradise as well. Even if you're not a messenger yourself, for being a messenger of the messenger who called to obedience to that messenger, and the Lord who sent that messenger. So the roles of everyone have been clarified in, in this juz. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how to focus, to be a source of light, not to concern ourselves too much with the darkness. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of us, but we are in need of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and have mercy upon us and to make us amongst those <coughs> who fulfill the amana of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to, and to forgive us for our shortcomings. Allahumma ameen. So today's charity, yesterday our charity was Muhsin. Alhamdulillah, we almost reached our goal of $20,000. Um, so we're at 15000 plus. If you go to yesterday's video, you can actually donate, inshallah ta'ala. Let's get it to 20000 Today's charity is actually Pious Projects. And Pious Projects, uh, they build, mashallah, wells in, in, in Mali. And, uh, and you might have seen, uh, you know, my, my, my little brother, uh, Muhammad Ziyara, MashaAllah, who's done a lot of great work with, with, that, with that project, with Pious Projects, um, as well as the head of it, obviously, Fahim Arif. They're doing wonderful, tremendous work, MashaAllah, building wells. And building a well is one of the easiest ways to get yourself into Jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned a woman who entered paradise by giving water to a thirsty dog. What then of constructing a well uh, for poor people that you would never meet? Uh, but subhanAllah, you are a source of comfort for them and a source of life for them. So inshallah ta'ala, as soon as I finish and log off this video, I'm going to post the link to that charity as well, inshallah ta'ala. So please do uh, contribute to it, bidnadai ta'ala. Jazakumallah khairan. I'll see you all tomorrow, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.